At one time, Northeastern Pennsylvania was one of the most important regions in America and the world. Anthracite coal mining was big business and ushered in a boom of prosperity for the region and with it came no less than seven railroads that capitalized on hauling the black diamonds out of the area. And although those glory days are long gone, remnants of the area's plethora of rail lines can still be found. On Scranton's north side, the Dean Street crossing comes alive at the approaching of a trainload of today's biggest area railroad business. Don't let the sunny sky fool you. It's a very cold and windy Sunday morning, January 14 to be exact. And while running around and running errands, I heard a familiar sound getting closer from the south side of town. On today's Delaware Lackawanna, frack sand is big business for the railroad, so much so that it's not uncommon for entire unit train loads to move in and out of town. You might have noticed that the 2461 leading is different from the one shown in 2017 at the start of this video. The rock lights have been removed from the nose along with the headlights. The headlights themselves are now located between the number boards. The horn has been changed and now chimes differently and has been moved from between the number boards to the top of the long hood. To top it all off, the locomotive has a fresh new coat of paint reflective of its Erie Lackawanna heritage.
Back on the Sunbury line, frac sand cars can routinely be found on trains 11Z, 37T, and 14R, but occasionally come in unit trains to Binghamton, New York. NS runs unit trains like the 62Z. This train originates on Canadian National and runs to Binghamton, New York to the New York Susquehanna and Western frac sand transloading site there. Normally the traffic moves in on other trains, but occasionally it warrants a full unit train that sometimes runs with Canadian National Power. Sometimes these trains run over the Sunbury Line. Today, Unit Sand Train number 101 is clawing its way northbound to Binghamton behind three of NS's finest, including an ET 44 AC Tier 4. One oddball sand train that came through town was the W7T back in 2016. W7T was a 37T extra freight symbol on Norfolk Southern. Today's is made up entirely of sand except for the last four cars on the tail end. The great mystery to me was exactly why this train was classified as an extra on the railroad when there was no actual train 37T that ran that day. Back to the future in 2024. Our Sunday morning special is disrupting the peaceful morning serenity as it trumpets loud and proud past the flashers of East Parker Street.
The Boulevard Avenue in Dixon City is home to one of the most important railroad landmarks in the region. The siding that the caboose and the freight depot are resting on is known as Stores Junction on the railroad. A modern day tribute to the bridge line to New England and Canada that once made daily treks along this line with Challenger steam locomotives and early diesels like the RS3s. Fortunately for rail fans, like the caboose and the freight depot, some original Delaware and Hudson RS3s are still in operation on today's Delaware Lackawanna. And just like East Parker Street back in the Green Ridge, the Boulevard Avenue is not spared by the early morning cacophony of horsepower and horn blasts. Back in 2018, the Delaware Lackawanna and the Norfolk Southern gambled on an experiment in efficiency when interchanging between the two roads. Sand and grain traffic was getting so heavy that unit trains destined for the Delaware Lackawanna were diverted directly into Steamtown as opposed to running into Taylor Yard for pickup. The very first of those experimental trains was then K-79 out of Binghamton, New York. Today. The K-79 is the evening Taylor Yard switcher. The DL's power will tack on to the point of this train and drag this monster manifest along with its power and crew into Steamtown.
Moving ahead to 2023, unit sand trains aren't as common as they used to be, thanks in large part to the Biden administration and their war on fossil fuels, but mainline manifests aren't completely extinct. Train 68N came down the line and into Taylor Yard on October 29, 2023. This entire train is also for the Delaware Lackawanna, but unlike back before 2020, this train will move a short distance south of the CP673 in Taylor past the DL's carbon switch, which was the original DNH Manuka Junction, and shove this entire train onto the DL's Carbondale line, aka the original DNH Penn Division main. Luckily, the NS crew has the power to make such a move. Besides being legendary in D&H history, the name Carbondale is a constant reminder of the business that fueled much of the American growth and prosperity. The D&H had a large yard operation here and in its original form, the Penn Division main line stretched northward all the way to Oneonta in the state of New York. In the 1980s, the D&H purchased the Lackawanna main line including Taylor Yard between Scranton and Binghamton, New York from Conrail which allowed it to downgrade and eventually abandon the line to Oneonta relieving it of one of its most formidable obstacles, the steep grades over the summit of Ararat Mountain. The line was then downgraded and eventually abandoned and with it towns like Carbondale were all but forgotten. Today, the Pennsylvania Northeast Regional Rail Authority owns what's left of the line between Carbondale and Scranton and the Delaware Lackawanna operates it as their Carbondale main line. What remains of the old Carbondale Yard has been converted to a business park, part of which serves the thriving fracking industry. My plan was to follow the Delaware Lackawanna all the way to Carbondale and its terminus at the Lindy Corporation, which I did. But for reasons that are still unknown to me, the DL made bad time getting to Carbondale, allowing for a nasty winter snow squall to move in, cutting my chase short at Dixon City. I figured that would be my last sighting of today's train, but wouldn't you know it, I made my way back into town and was walking out of the local Planet Fitness when coming south down the line was the power along with the empty backhauls for the day. I couldn't get a shot there at Green Ridge, so I opted for Steamtown where the clouds had moved away, allowing for nice light on the train. Unfortunately, what hadn't moved away was the violent winds that had been haunting me ever since I first saw this train early this morning. So as far as the sound quality goes, well, you'll hear it for yourself.
My last shot of this train was watching it back down the hill and into the Taylor yard in the fading evening light. Of course, this wasn't the first time that an unexpected early morning encounter with the train ended up becoming an all-day gasoline siphoning chase-a-thon that took me into another town. There's many more such encounters ahead, but then again, you probably already knew that.